Okay, so we are mixing up a couple of batches of dry cow feed right now. We've got uh, a far off batch going on the white mixer, which will be the mixer wagon on your guys' right hand side. And then we've got the close up batch going into uh, the red mixer wagon. Now, some of you have asked uh, back when we were baling hay, how we process the hay or how we feed it or what have you. Um, what we're doing here is we're putting dry hay right into the TMR mix, which it's going right into the mixer wagon, and then these mixer wagons have uh, knives on the mixing screws. Therefore, that's how we are able to uh, process the hay. It cuts it up in about two and a half inch uh, length and then once we get the hay the amount of hay that we need in the mixer wagon we'll go ahead and dump corn silage in uh, one batch gets a little bit of haylage and then both batches will get uh, dry cow grain now uh, today is going to be the first actual day that we're going to be able to get the mixer wagon into uh, the barn edition with all the cows in it um, during the whole uh, expansion of the new barn, we were able to get into the feed alley. Uh, however, obviously there wasn't any animals in the addition part, but now there is. Now, um, we are only able to go in the one end of that barn. Uh, when they poured the feed alley, in order to get feed into the older part of the barn, for a few days we had to... Uh, dump feed on the one end and go in and out with the skid steer. I had to bring feed in uh, with the skid steer in order to uh, obviously get the feed in the barn. So they ended up pouring the apron pad on the end of the barn uh, the other day and then they also had to pour a couple of cement pads in between the existing uh, part of the barn and the addition Therefore, we couldn't put uh, cows in the addition until that concrete had been poured. And um, now we have all the cows moved into uh, the addition. It is full. And today we're going to be able to get the mixer wagon across that apron since the concrete's hard enough um, for a couple days. When uh, feed alley got poured, we had to bring it in with a skid steer like I was saying. And then for a couple days after that apron got poured, we had to uh, go in with feed with the skid steer again. So it was about 13, 14,000 pounds for the milk cows and about that man, about 12,000 or so um, pounds of dry cow feed and all that had to be hauled in with the skid steer. So back a while ago uh, when we did that, um, hay balling video there uh, some of you have asked you know what we do to feed hay or how we feed it or process it or what have you uh, we actually just dump the dry hay right into the mixer wagon as you can see that I've been doing here now um, this is for the dry cows I'm mixing two batches up I've got one batch going into or going to the far off dry cows and then we've got a batch that we mix up for the uh, close-ups. Um, we dump the baled hay in the mixer wagon first and then we dump the corn silage in on top of the baled hay. That kind of helps hold the hay down inside the mixer and it enables the knives that are on the mixing screws to chop up that hay to, and dice it up in uh, about a two inch to a two and a half inch length and uh, we'll bring this drone over to the top of the mixer wagon and you can see the uh, the white mixer has got um, uh, the far off feed on it you can see the mixer screws are going to town there um, we ended up putting new knives um, on the mixer wagon or in that white mixer wagon 
uh, the other day and we had to put a new conveyor chain on that and I can show you that. I didn't end up videoing it at all. But we're just getting uh, some, a little bit of corn silage dumped into that uh, one mixer wagon. Now some guys will actually use a bale chopper for their dry hay and they'll chop a bunch of the hay up ahead of time and uh, blow it into a commodity shed bay or corner of their barn or something. Um, but these mixer wagons that we have, uh, they do a great job processing dry hay. The only amount of dry hay that we feed is to the dry cows and to um, calves. The calves, when we feed that hay, we just slab out the bales, you know, feed the flakes of hay off that way. And um, that seems to work pretty good. Now, our baler has a processor on it where we can cut the hay as the hay is going through the baler, but um, we don't choose to do that since we handle these bales so many times. Um, we don't want the bales breaking apart. And then when we go to feed the hay to the calves, it would be hard to um, feed the flakes of hay out if, if the flakes just all broke apart. Um, some guys will process the hay so that they can run it through a different style mixer if they don't choose to um, use a bale chopper or something like that. Um, we've had Supreme Mixer Wagons for, oh God, better than 20 years now and that main thing we bought the Supreme Mixer Wagon for was the ability for it to process the hay in the dry cow ration like this. We had a lot of sorting going on um, prior to using the Supreme Mixer. We were using a four auger harsh mixer wagon and we would mix up corn silage and grain and a little bit of haylage. We would feed that and then we would go in later on with uh, dry hay after they ate all the corn silage and everything and um, we were having cows sort through feed and some of them would get a good amount of corn silage and then they would be full and they wouldn't get any baled hay and then vice versa the same thing was kind of going on with the cows that were getting an overabundance of hay they weren't getting their uh, dry cow grain which was mixed in with uh, uh, corn silage so we've got um, the baled hay the corn silage and the uh, haylage dumped on the mixer wagons now we are feeding or gonna dump in uh, dry cow grain give you a little better look of the grain going into the load that is on this red mixer wagon here. This is the close-up batch. Okay, so we have all the ingredients loaded into both mixer wagons. As you can see, the uh, red mixer is all mixed up pretty good. And everything on the uh, white one is mixed up as well. You can kind of see there's a slightly smaller load on the white mixer wagon. But that small protrusion up through the feed there, that's the top knife on the uh, mixer screw itself. Uh, there's ten knives in each mixer, five on each screw, and uh, that's what kind of cuts the hay up. And it is completely processed. 
and ready to be fed off. So let's go and get these cows fed. Well, we are just about done feeding here now. I've got one more cow load to do and one more load to mix up the feed to the heifers. We did quite a bit of work to this mixer wagon the other day and I didn't film much of it. Uh, last uh, Sunday, we ended up having one of these paddles come off and now these uh, one by two paddles are welded to uh, the chain. And the chain was wore out enough that the pin uh, right there that went through uh, that rivet part of the pin came off and it allowed the chain link to walk out and I got looking at the chain and it was getting thin. So I ended up replacing the chain. We put new sprockets on here and a new shaft and along with that the front of the conveyor the chain was coming through. It was eating through this front part of the conveyor so I put a plate of steel in there and uh, 
new chain bearings sprockets like I was saying now we're gonna jump up inside Ugh. I ended up putting uh, new knives in it as well and this is the these knives here is what cuts up the um, the baled hay along with the new knives we also ended up putting uh, new kicker plates on here now um, I this is the third set of kicker plates that we have put on um, these screws back in February of 2019 we relined this mixer wagon you kind of see the liner right here it only goes up about it's about four feet the uh, original kicker plate is right here and um, we were having some grain get settled out and it was the mixer would start hard too so we extended the kicker plate down uh, like that and that um, allows the mixer to start better and then what it does is it it lifts it kicks up the grain when the grain falls to the bottom as you load the mixer wagon and as it mixes it kind of keeps the grain in suspension now um, on this mixer wagon uh, there's obviously two screws in here you kind of seen that from the aerial shot um, you know the kicker plates on this back screw as well and uh, same same ordeal really um, these screws are about eh, there's probably two-thirds left to them or so They're pretty pretty thick yet I ended up welding the date on the um, baffle plate here which I thought that would be wore off by now it's getting down there but um, yeah it is what it is so you would think that well would be wore down more than it is I, I um, have seen that wear right out before so well that's gonna be it for this video I've got two more loads to load up and get fed out and that is gonna do it I want to thank you for watching and we will catch you at the next video folks